for joining us for yet another wonderful episode this morning. This is the Tantrum House Saturday Morning Board Game Show. Mm -hmm. I'm Will Meadows. I'm Katie Pills. Leah Meadows. Ryan Pills. Everybody's here. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. And Gwen. And Sidekick Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in and hanging out with us this morning. We are going to be playing a bunch of different games, running through, kind of giving you an overview of what we've got uh, on this table, on that table. We also have some giveaways, so make sure you stay tuned to the end of the show. We'll explain how to get your hands on one of the games that we're showing off today. Uh, we have to give a shout out to some of our sponsors, and I'll let Kevin do that in a minute when we switch over to the table. I think we might be looking at one of our sponsors' games to start off with. And then, yeah, we're just going to hop back and forth, cover as many games as we can. We'd love to chat with you guys in the comments. Uh, Sarah is manning the switcher at the moment, so say hi to her. And then if you have questions or thoughts throughout the course of the day, let us know because we're going to be trying to check comments as well because we want to interact with you guys, hang out this morning, and have a blast mm -hmm. with our Saturday morning board game show. Let's kick it over to the table. I'm Kevin. I'm Melissa. And one of our series sponsors is Queen Games. The other one is the Op, but we'll do uh, one of the Op games a little bit later in the show. But currently, we have Alhambra, an old classic from Queen Games. Yes, it was a Spieler winner in 2003. So this game has been around for a long time. We were actually talking about we have one of the old box types. <laughs> Amy was like, what is I was that? Like, is this the same game that we have? Because our box is not in that <laughs> shape. <laughs> yeah, so there are quite a few. There's a revised version, there's a big box, different ways to get the game Alhambra. So basically, this is a tile laying game. We I kind of set it up as if it were mid-game. We have money in our hands that we are going to try to use to buy tiles. So I'll take my turn first. Go for it. I have a nine orange, okay. which matches the color of this, the, of the money spot, and then the price of it, so I can buy it. Yep. Yeah. And then since I used exact change, the exact amount, I get to go again. I am not choosing to buy another tile. Instead, mm -hmm. I'm going to take money, and I will take the. <sighs> The yellow three and the one, you Why? can either take one card that's five or more, or multiple cards that equal five um, or less. Where's the bag and of tiles? And then I get to put that there. Bag of tiles, I probably have them in the box. Where'd the box go? I don't know. There's a bag of tiles somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. And then you basically refresh <laughs> the thing. Melissa's gonna start looking for the box. Mm -hmm. So while Melissa's looking, I have exact change for the blue section here. She found the bag! So I'm gonna pay, oh thank you, exact change which would be eight and it fits perfectly in my Alhambra. Wow. Because there are and mm -hmm. <laughs> Melissa. Oh that was nice for you. It was a nice play so I actually have a seven orange bronze mm -hmm. Copper, copper yeah. money, <laughs> and it's exact for that, so I can go again, but I can't, oh, I could place it right up there. Look and technically, that. you place all your tiles at the end sure. of your turn. Okay. And then, I'm going to be finished, and I'm going to get the... <laughs> Six blue, oh. or ten bronze. Definitely not. So you can buy something without exact change, but then you don't get a second action, and you don't actually receive change unless you're playing with one of the expansions that has coins. But um, mm. I'm just gonna take money. Okay. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take the five. Take the five. All right. So basically, we go around and around and around to do that, mm -hmm. and there are certain cards in the deck. Which I probably didn't put in. Didn't put in, but they're basically mm -hmm. scoring time, scoring sessions. Mm -hmm. And then you will score based on majorities, how much you have of each color type, and they're on the little player boards. It has the points that you would get for first, second, third. For A, B, and C rounds. Yes, for the different rounds. You'd also score your walls, each wall that's connected in your largest wall. I yeah. got eight walls. Wow. But like that means he <laughs> has fewer options of what he can actually play in his Alhambra. Because We're not playing a full game right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but, but the thing is, mm -hmm. um, Amy has a lot of money cards. I paid a lot 
So mm -hmm. I have to then start refreshing my hand back mm -hmm. up. So taking more turns mm -hmm. to just take money instead of tiles. Yeah. yeah. So that is Alhambra. It's a fairly light-ish game. I think medium some, weight. Yeah. There's some thinking to it, but nothing too taxing. Like, yeah. If you're familiar with Carcassonne, I'd say this is a level up from mm -hmm. Carcassonne. And there are a lot of expansions. Some of them are easier to get than others, but there are a few that Kevin and I enjoy playing with. And this has made it into Sarah's top 20 games of all time, mm -hmm. so. Yes, it almost made it into my top 10. It was vying with another game, mm -hmm. and I think I went with the other game instead. Well, okay. yes, thank you for to Queen Games for sponsoring uh, the series for the Saturday Morning Board Game Show, but we're going back to the couch. Okay, Liam here. Today we are on the couch. We are going to be checking out Gridopolis. It is a one to four player. It's kind of like 3D checkers almost. Yeah, very much yeah. so. It's uh, this has won all kinds of Minsa awards and different and different awards for being a brain challenging puzzle type of game. Uh, we've got it set up in one of the modes for four players, and in the game you will basically be treating it like a checkers board, but it's very three dimensional. Yeah. So I could take my purple pawn right here and I could move it into this space, or I can move it forward into this space, or down into this space, which is kind of cool. These little node guys right here act as teleporters, which is pretty slick. So if I move from here to here, I don't actually end up here. I go from this teleporter to one of the others, so poof, I'm already halfway across the board in one yeah, turn, Yeah, and which there's is also a teleporters at the bottom right. and in the middle. Yeah, three different layers. You can jump over. The idea is that you're jumping over other characters, so this would be a bad move, because if Liam was green, yeah, he could kill me. Yeah, I could go right here. Oh, actually, no, you couldn't. Here's oh, what yeah. you have to do. You have to yeah, add, you, uh, you start the game with a couple of different components in your hand that you can make upgrades to your game with, and you could, oh, if I look over here, I can see it. You could actually could add go. a port. Now he could jump he over, jump and, over kill and kill me. Kill. Because yeah. everything has to be in a straight yeah. line, which is pretty slick. Uh, the game also has some blocks, so you can yeah. stop people from moving. So yeah. if I had stuck that there, he wouldn't be able to. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't be able to hop over me, which is mm. kind of cool. And then my favorite part about the game, honestly, is that when you get across to the other side, if you make it to the other side, you can actually king your pawns. Yeah. Right, which is definitely like checkers. Right, so you can only move forward uh, or sideways with yeah. pawns, but once you've kinged it, you can go anywhere. Yeah. And that is pretty cool because, like, if you're standing here. And another thing that is cool, like, you can go from here to here. Is it here and here? Well, you can go here. Yeah. As long as it's a straight line, so yeah. you can jump across and yeah. hit this side and kill that guy and he'd be off the board. Uh, obviously, we've got kind of like the base model mode yeah. set up. Uh, I think the best, yeah, the box maybe has some examples of them. See them. But yeah. you can build this out in all kinds of different ways. It comes with a book. That's what you can build a instructions. Yeah, a couple of different ways that you can lay out the entire thing. Uh, yeah. Four players definitely makes it crazy and interesting. Two players is yeah. very much more like checkers where checkers you're just trying to get across the board. Yeah. Four is all over. Any other thoughts? Yeah, um, yeah I like the different builds. This one um, kind of reminds me of, what's it called? Like, it's almost like Legos when you're building it mm -hmm. up because, like, there's all the pieces that you put together. And it's actually really fun to set up the whole board. Yeah, it is neat. It takes, yeah, it takes a little bit of setup time. Yeah, I was actually pretty impressed. It does all fit back in the box pretty easily, which is nice. Yeah. The setup time is a smidgen long. Yeah. But uh, it looks cool enough that we just leave it up half the time. We know we're going to play yeah. it two or three yeah. more times. It takes about 45 minutes to play. Maybe. Yeah, so it is Depends player elimination. On four, yeah, we played four players and it took like 45 minutes. Yeah, 30 to 45. I think we like we unfortunately killed Lincoln last time we played like yeah. pretty instantaneously. Yeah. And then me and, then I died, and Xander played and then, for a long time. And then I died and then Xander won. Yeah, I think he did. So that's cool stuff. Yep, so that is Gridopolis. Check that one out if you're looking for a brightly colored, ginormous table taking up fun game for everybody because it is got some cool stuff going on. Uh, are we ready back at the table? Hello, welcome back to the table. We are talking about Chronicles of Crime, but a new Chronicles of Crime, the Millennium series, specifically the 1400. The Millennium series had three different uh, scenario box, I didn't say scenarios, boxes. Time 1400, periods. yeah, time. 1400, 1900, and I think it was 2100. So we have the 1400 that we want to show off. And um, I do have a preview video of this game if you would like to see a little bit more in depth of what's like goes on in this game. 
But uh, if you're familiar with Chronicles of Crime from Lucky Duck, it's was one of our favorite yes. games, mm -hmm. uh, mystery type games where you're actually um, including or incorporating some electronics into mm -hmm. the game. Yeah, it reminds me a little bit of Sherlock Holmes Consulting Detective, but it is more interactive because it does have the app element. You're actually scanning the cards and the QR codes. So if you find something, you can scan it and you can then show the food to another character. We have people, are these the people? People are there. People. They can't um, look at these. Oh. Secret. These, oh, are secret. Are secret. These are secret. These are secret. So you're playing through the game. It is app dependent. Yeah. You have to have the app to play. Um, so I actually have the app up right here, and you actually can see the app has um, a bunch of different scenarios that you can play. Very mystery based in in the original game, and you're gonna and that's gonna follow through in the uh, Chronicles of Crime 1400. Yeah. Hence the term Chronicles of Crime. Usually, you are trying to sleuth out what the crime is, who did it, and how it happened, and you're answering questions at the end of the game trying to uh, figure out the answers. Right. And I believe that this box, the 1400, has several scenarios yeah, so, in it. So we're, now we have Missing Pages, Last Bath, The Divine Will, The Light in the Dark. So those are already able to play, and there's a tutorials to walk you through it if, you, if it's your first time if you've never played any of the Chronicles of Crime scenarios before as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I really enjoy the whole Chronicles of Crime, um, just how it plays, the, the app, the cards, thinking through what location should we go to, who should we talk to. We can ask a person about another person and get more information. So depending on the path that you go, the story is going to be slightly different what information you unlock and how you unlock it. Yeah, and you have sort of your uh, people that you can talk to, monk and merchant and spy. They're experts that can sort of help you figure out um, answers that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, maybe there's a clue um, that leads you to, and like, oh, maybe I should ask the merchant about that or the monk. And you're traveling to different locations. I don't know if we showed you these yet or not, but they're beautiful mm -hmm. um, illustrations. They're actually double-sided mm -hmm. uh, illustrations. So the app will and lead you, you. Lay them out so we can go to the overhead. Sure. And uh, you can actually. Uh, the app will lead you to these different mm -hmm. areas throughout and you as a group get to decide mm -hmm. oh there might be like five different areas you could go to what? yes oh I was like now we're on the overhead <laughs> sorry five five different things that you go to you as a group are deciding where do you want to go which is the best lead to help mm -hmm. you figure out the crime uh, some of the other things that the 1400 in is it brings up these cards are basically like almost like a dream or like a Visions? Yeah, visions are better, a better word for it. And I'm not going to show them to you, but uh, the other side gives you hints uh, that might help you figure out uh, the crime. So, yeah, Chronicles of Crime 1400. It is just uh, being delivered to backers now, but it... I'm guessing Lucky Duck probably has a way to purchase it or pre-order. Yeah, you can go to LuckyDuckGames.com. They have a brand new web store. You might even be able to use Tantrum 10 for some of the stuff because we have a promo code. So hint, hint. for, I don't for know a it, discount, I don't maybe? know if it'll apply to everything, but there's certain games that it will apply to at LuckyDuckGames.com. So there you go. All right. Back to the couch. Oh, okay. I was looking for the light. Anyway. Uh, we are looking at Blinks. It's an electronic game by Move38, uh, and it has these little honeycomb uh, hexagonal uh, electronic pieces. And the way the game works, is each one of these has its own game that it knows. And what you do is you turn them on. Let's see if I can do this right. Uh, you have to just click them. They turn on. And then the game you want to play, let's say I want to play Bomb Brigade, you hold that one down a few seconds until it shows you its startup thing, and then you click it in, and it teaches all of the others that game. And then when it's ready, it's supposed to go through a blue and green sequence. I think these are already taught with Barry. Yeah, so we're gonna play Barry. So the way Barry plays, uh, so there's, each one of these is a different game. This is two different sets. There's a core set, an expansion set. 
so we'll just give you an example of one of them. In berry, you start out with three each. I just set these aside. And you just click them once and they change to the color you need them to be. And the way you play this game is you take turns adding them to the cluster and whatever ones they're next to, you change their colors and then you gain points based on what formations you make of certain colors. Um, but again, this is just one of the many games you could be playing. So I'm just, here I'll start and you put yours out. So I would want to put a blue one. No, you just put, uh, Whatever one you press, whatever one you put in, you're just clicking the one next to it change. So this one will change oh. to red. So maybe you want to put a red one in so that they're the same. But I'm going to put the next one. You don't actually score until you have at least three. So you got to think about what I'm going to do. I don't know what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah. So you click it in and then you just click the one next to it. And then I put one in, I'm gonna put the yellow one in, and then I click the two next to it. Okay. There is another rule, if you connect it to three additional ones, you click all of them and the one that you did. So you'd click four all together. But you can't do that there yet. Correct. That'd be like if it was like this. Right. And you did that. That's so not what we did. This is a formation, so you would immediately score this point? Uh, yeah, actually that's one point for me. 10 points wins this one. So go, go ahead and try another one. Okay, well. I think they still need set up over there. Well, I want to do this. <laughs> well, there you go. So you click these two, but that's not a formation. Uh huh. And then good I. Luck getting points, though. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Uh, I'll do that one and do these two. And then uh, something changes once we add the last one in. Hmm. So even if there's five out here, if we make one of these other formations. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. Even if it's not the one you put in. There's a question, would blinks work for colorblind people? I think so. Since so Ryan's colorblind. I'm not sure what all colors it does. It does do green. Um, I'm red, green, colorblind, and I can tell them fairly well. But there aren't any shapes to help you out. So it depends on what colorblindness you have. So you did this. Mm -hmm. That is a shape. You get two points. Winning! Now... We should end the game here. The, just a, a brief thing about Barry. At this point, we don't have any additional ones, so we have to pull them off. We can't pull them off if there's one on either side of it, or if pulling it off, like, if this wasn't here, pulling it off, oh, no, that's not it either. If we pulled it off, it would uh. cause two separate ones. Can't do that either. So then you just keep going until you score 10 points, and then you can play another game. So there's, there's a bunch in here. There's Wham, Mortals, Honey, Puzzle 101, Fracture, lots of fun. And it comes with this little sushi roll. If you don't want to put it in the box, the box is already pretty small. You can wrap them up in this sushi roll in a big stack and carry what? them around like that. So that's pretty cool. We ready at the sure. table? All right, so that was Blinks. Check it out. Back to the table. Hello, welcome to the table. Sarah's here. <laughs> uh, we are looking at Blue Skies from Rio Grande Games. This is a um, area influence. Um, what other mechanics? Do we a little have? hand management going yeah, on. Yeah, hand management. Little that's, hand management. That's but mainly area influence because you are in charge of a airline. So I have Sunshine Airlines. Who do you have? I have Royal Air. This is definitely, you can sort of see the theme, the very like 1960s, 1970s? Yeah. Probably 1970s. I think it even when, says it. When was the... 1970s. Yes. 1970s. They had the whole scheme. This was actually, we were talking to a friend, this is actually a real poster. Or yes. at least looks like one. It's, oh, it's no, based, it's based, based off of a real, real poster, poster. Definitely. Yeah. But I kind of like it. It's kind of like iconic. So. Yes. In the game, you're trying to manage passengers on flights to different cities using your specific airline. So uh, we will be placing our markers out there. We're, we have it set up now that there are a few cities that you start off with mm -hmm. that have the local airline mm -hmm. taking over those flights. And we can also have our airline come to certain yep. cities to manage passengers there. Yep. So, so like, you, so I can play a card, and I can go to Houston. That's going to cost me two. Yep. So. Oh, I start with. Yeah. Yeah. 
And um, and then basically you're trying to get majority. Yeah, and you don't actually use those to. Never mind. Yes. So <laughs> passengers are going to come out. Passengers are coming out. Wait, yeah. I'm not supposed to use what? Oh, your income is different than oh, that's the right. money yeah, that yeah, you yeah, have. Yeah. Too. That's right. You get six basically that's money right. each I'm round. I'm not spending this money. To... I have six money. Thank you, Melissa. Mm -hmm. So I now I'm pulling out. There are two color cubes in here, red and green. I want green cubes to come out. Yes. When green cubes come out, <laughs> oh, it was green. Um, you get the, to pull an extra. Yes, right. you get to pull. Oh, and a red. All right, Sarah, do you want to go somewhere? Right. And the game, the board normally is set up with stuff yeah, there's more already stuff. on there. There's yeah. usually already passengers on the yeah. board. But what you're trying to do over the course of the game is to um, have your airlines cover cities where there's going to be a lot of passengers. Not all the cities are going to have a lot of passengers, which that's how it is in real life. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of set up based like LAX is a pretty uh, robust airport mm -hmm. with a lot of things going on, whereas some of these smaller airports like Minneapolis doesn't mm -hmm. have as much. So it is also based uh, regionally is how we're going to score at the end. That's really important because yes. the first time we played, we're, I did, we're, we were like, we're putting stuff out, having fun, but then it's like, at the end, we're like, oh, this is how we're going to regions score. Regions are super, super important. Yeah, so. so there is a first and second place for mm -hmm. each region. And some of them, like JFK, is in two regions. Mm -hmm. So going there is going, it costs more Cost to more. go there, yep. but you're influencing two areas. So yep. each area, a region is going to give different point values mm -hmm. based on the airports that are there. Yep, yep. So you're ultimately trying to get your airline there and play cards out of your hand and try and get the passengers mm -hmm. to show up at yep. the airports where yep. you're actually controlling. Yeah, so Melissa was saying earlier, the cost is you basically get six influence points that you get to yeah. go out and all of these are, so this one cost me two of my six. These numbers here are end game points, whoever does control that. Well, region. end game influence so okay. points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, is, sorry. Yeah, end game influence, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that is Blue Skies from Rio Grande Games. Um, definitely, if you like area control games, this is would definitely be up your alley. Yep. Are we, are we ready over the couch? Back right. to the couch. <laughs> So welcome back. This, what we are looking at, is not dice, K-N-O-T, um, because they are in fact dice, uh, are they? from, yes, from Black are Oak they? Games, and uh, it's, I don't know, if, yeah, it's an expansion. I was like, is this a standalone? No, this is an expansion, not dice squared. So what you have in not dice is some uh, different designs that kind of make Celtic knots, that's what they were going for. And then in Not Dice Squared, uh, they're a little more irregular, not quite the traditional uh, shapes you see in a Celtic knot. But <clears throat> in both games, the game and the expansion, you have a book of games and a book of puzzles. The Not Dice Squared adds on to some of the games from the original Not Dice and adds uh, the possibility of doing two more players. There's only four uh, colors in the original one to do games with. So sometimes, um, some of the puzzles are like, you know, here is a configuration of dice. By manipulating these in these certain ways, can you make that into a Celtic knot? Or um, there's some that even are like stacking where you try to do an unbroken line, whatever, with the designs on the outside. It is quite puzzly. And we're not going to do that because it'd be way too thinking. But we will play a really brief game. This is a cooperative game in the base game. Um, I don't remember what it's called. But uh, what we do is we start off with two dice that we roll. And these are two designs in our pool. And then on our turn, we take one of the additional dice from the pool, roll it, and then we can add that to a collective figure that we are making and then we try to make it as big as we can without while always connecting you know the the lines and then depending on how big we make it then we score out how long and how wide the sides were so i think it was my turn oh these are my two 
I was supposed to add one. Whoops. There, you there go. we go. I ended our thing very short. Oh, so now it's your turn. <laughs> Bad news. Yeah, so it doesn't have to be symmetrical. You just build it out. That's the one I'm going to do. Here, I'll roll another one. Cool. And you just keep going until you can't going find going um, a match. I think once you run out of dice, you can re-roll some of the ones you have at the beginning. Mm. It's not a bad one. Let's try doing that over here. The corners are hard because right. you put that one right there. <laughs> kind of blocks off your abilities. <laughs> it's gonna be oddly shaped, not dice. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Well, that's the end of that, isn't it? I'm oh. just trying to challenge you. <laughs> hey, this there you go. Weird. Uh, let's do that one there. Oh, you're ending the puzzle. Well, you, you get points based on how wide and how long. So um, now I kind of want to do it wider. Let's see. Does it matter how wide or? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to look it up. Uh, I'm going to do this one here. Oh, fancy. You're welcome. I can have this one up here. Let's see what this one was. So, uh... Oh, no. I still have I to add another shape. Put it here. Oh. So to score the game, count the number of dice in your completed design and subtract the longest dimension. Oh, subtract the longest. Oh, So you no. don't want it long. <laughs> you want did it that more wrong. Square. So you want it compact. Yeah. So we didn't score very well. But that is not <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's it, not it is how pretty fun. It. It's interesting. And I like the puzzles. I spent a long time trying to do one of the puzzles last night, like one of the easy ones, and I decided I can't show you a puzzle on camera because <laughs> that would take hours. So anyway, that was not dice. I think we're ready at the table yep. for an we're old here. school game. We're yeah, ready. Let's go. Okay, we're on the table. We are looking at backgammon. Backgammon. Oh, backgammon. Back yes. <laughs> Admittedly. Liam just learned it this morning. Um, this is one of those like really, really old games that comes from history. Um, this is something I learned when I was a kid um, and Liam just learned today. Um, we played a game this morning. I won, of course, but <laughs> um, it could come down to anybody winning in the end. Yeah. If you um, if you've ever played this game, for me it's like super nostalgic. Yeah. Um, because I uh, my grandmother, who I pretty much credit with getting me into gaming, um, taught me this game when I was a kid. Um, and so if you're not familiar with backgammon, um, it is for traditionally for two players. Um, you are moving your little pieces. Um, I believe they're called Tokens. men across okay. the board. We're moving in opposite directions. So, so. Um, I would be playing as uh, the black tokens, and, I'm playing and as I'll be Mario. moving. Yeah, I'll be moving across the board this direction, and he will be moving across the board that direction. Try to get all of your tokens into these in, two wells. Yeah, the two slots. Um, and then on your turn, mm -hmm. you're just going to roll. And then I got a five and a three, mm -hmm. so I move one piece five times, and then one piece one piece three times. Or you could move. Yeah. You could you can put the dice together to do a eight. single eight move, or you can move two separate dice. Um, yeah. A uh, five and three. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna do three. One, two, three. Right here. Okay. And then I would roll. I'm not yeah. gonna keep that one in here. Um. Here's a good example of um, this is doubles. You get two. to do move two. It's important to move two at a time if you can um, yeah. because um, what Liam's done here is left two vulnerable. Um, those will send his um, little guys back to the start position if i able to land in those positions. Otherwise, I can't um, invade areas where Liam has more than one yeah. person. So I'm going to move these two, one, two, okay. and I 
sent his guy back, and then because mm -hmm. they're doubles, they're doubled again. Yeah, you get to do So I get to do two. an additional two. So I'm going to go one, two. Okay. So doubles are actually really nice. Whoa. That was a bit crazy, Liam. <laughs> Don't get too excited. So now Liam has to try to get this yeah. guy out on the board. He'll okay, come over here in one two. of his start positions. So, so five. He can either start here yeah. on five or here on two. I'm going to start here and then use this two and go one, two and get this guy in. So Liam's got his first guy in. That is the basics of backgammon. The instructions also come with um, information about how to play a five player version, which I didn't even know was possible yeah. until I was looking at the rules. Um, and then also it comes with the doubling dice for if you are making bets on the game. Of course, I didn't do that as a child because I had no money. Yeah. Um, but that is all available in, in the rules. This is, um, once again, Backgammon. And, and isn't the sponsor? It's yes, the sponsor. Backgammon oh, yeah. is one of our sponsors. It is, it's one of our episode sponsors. Uh, so we actually have two copies here, the mm -hmm. red and the black. Oh, yeah. Show off the black and white. Not shown the black and white one yet. So we were gonna give away one of these. Mm -hmm. So we were gonna give away one of these to someone who's commenting in the chat. Mm -hmm. So definitely keep chatting away and uh, tell us if you've ever played backgammon because yeah. I personally have never played it. This is your first time, Liam. Yeah, just this morning. Yeah. I was super surprised that a lot of people have not. Played I backgammon. ask people and they're like, I've never played backgammon. I think it might be one of those classic games that just not a lot of people were taught. Like. Yeah. Yeah. Chess, chess. Or yeah, but I played Moncala. I, I, I know chess and Moncala. Chinese checkers. I love Chinese checkers. Those like the very old classics. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, since they are one of our episode sponsors for just this episode, they're giving us a twenty percent off dis discount code to our mm -hmm. viewers. That I already put the link in the chat, so mm -hmm. you can check out that on an Am on Amazon. And um, also at the end of the show, we'll give away one of these uh, copies. So are we awesome. ready? Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna run to the couch. Kevin, had to make sure we were saying the right things. <laughs> I'm in the wrong way. <laughs> okay. It's on. Oh, we don't have a light. There's okay. no light. It's not working. The light's not working. Hi. <laughs> You're just wondering why are we staring at you in the screen? Because I was waiting for the red light that Melissa always. Right. Usually I'm telling Kevin, look at the light. Look That's the your light. camera. So I, I I led you wrong this time. Melissa Sorry. led me wrong. But anyway, we were talking about a exit game from Cosmos. They put out a bunch mm -hmm. of exit games. This is one of the newer ones. This is the Enchanted Forest. Melissa and I just played this um, over the weekend. And um, how we're did... not gonna show anything spoilery. Yeah, no, so. no spoilers. I guess you shouldn't even really show. No, I mean they all have a dial. Okay. But you pull it out at the beginning. Okay. All right. <laughs> Sort of spoiler, but not that much. Um, but the Enchanted Forest is at level two out of five, and um, I would say it's definitely for most of the game level two. Explain a little bit about the theme, Melissa. All right. Well, why don't? In case you haven't actually oh, played an exit game, um, this is an escape room game. The exit games are destructive, destructible. Anyway, you. If you play it the way it's designed to be played, you will be cutting things, folding things, mm, um, destroying, the destroying game. things, so they're not able to be replayed unless you go to great lengths to photocopy things and, and do that sort of thing. So, exit games are very tactile in the nature of their puzzles. This is um, a level two. I don't think I've seen any level ones. So, level two, I think, is the easiest that they have currently published. We've played, we've played quite a few level twos. I would personally say this is like a level two for most of the game mm -hmm. until you get to the very last puzzle. Yes, without any spoilers, we were able to pretty much figure out all the puzzles fairly easily. The last one I think was a little bit more of the creative aspect than the logic aspect. Yeah, I agree. Um, it, you didn't have anything more creative. Hints. Yeah, we had to use some hints for the last puzzle. Uh, creative thinking is mm -hmm. definitely uh, a way. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, uh, Enchanted Forest is one of the newer ones. Um, um, yeah, the theme is basically think fairy tales, kind mm -hmm. of like you've gone into the fairy tales and you're talking to the different characters mm -hmm. in fairy tales. Um, Exit games, they have a clue structure, so if you do get stuck, there's a first clue, second clue, third clue. First clue is going to give you, these are the 
pieces that you need for the puzzle. Now, this level two basically doesn't let you advance till you complete the puzzle, so you usually know if you have everything. Some of the higher level games, you have all of these items and pages, so you don't always know which stuff you're supposed yeah, what, to what, connect to which puzzle. Right, or which one you think you can actually have, you have all the information. Right. Um, but this level two and some of the other ones like the haunted roller coaster, the mm -hmm. recent ones, they basically take you through it one page at a time, which simplifies the amount I think of information. The airplane one is like that too. Um, yeah. So. so anyway, yeah, the clues. First one tells you stuff you need. Second one's going to give you a little hint, and then the third one's actually going to give you the answer. So that is nice that you don't get completely stuck. You can always get to the answer if you need to. Cool. Um, yeah, so that is Exit, the Enchanted Forest. Yep. Lots and lots of Exit games from like level two to five difficulty. Um, the shot has played the Unlocks series. Yeah, I do really like the Unlocks as well. Those require an app, but they are completely uh, replayable for someone else because you're usually not destroying anything. There may be one or two where they've added a little bit more tactile nature to it, but usually um, it's all in the cards and the app. Matt asked about replayable. I know we sort of mentioned that. Yeah, and then he said, oh, you answered it. <laughs> <laughs> we have tried to, there might be some where you could try to pass it on, but it's unlocks are just much easier to pass on. Yeah, it's I have, I think there are threads on like Board Game Geek of people who have made the exits replayable, they've photocopied the whole booklet, they've photocopied pieces and all of that. That just sounds like a lot of work to me for a $20. $12 to $15 yes. game. Let's just buy a new one. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> all right, I think we're going back over to the table now. Welcome back over here to the op for also sponsoring our show today. We are looking at Plankton Rising, yes. the SpongeBob version of the Rising series. Uh, in the game, Plankton is trying to find the secret recipe to the Krabby Patty. Yes. <laughs> yes, so you get to play as one of the characters from the show. I am Katie. Who are you? I'm playing as Squidward Tentacles. He is I'm my favorite character. Just good old SpongeBob SquarePants. Yep. We also have Mr. Krabs and Patrick mm -hmm. Star, and so you'll have a card with their home location. So mm -hmm. uh, down in Bikini mm -hmm. Bottom. Uh, yeah. So I have SpongeBob's pineapple. Pineapple. Yep. Uh, in the game, uh, Plankton gets to take a turn first. Sure. So th in this version, you have a deck of cards, so you'll reveal where Plankton is going to go. There's three choices. He can go to the dining room, uh, he can go to the chum bucket, which will remove him from doing damage That's in an good. area, yes. or uh, he can go to this yeah, side, dining room. Uh, which is the kitchen. <laughs> And also on these cards, it has one of the yeah. six areas of the Krabby Patty that he has to figure the recipe out for. So yeah. this yeah. first card, he would go to the dining room and he gets he's some working information on about the top the, bun. Just the top bun, yeah. Yeah. Um, so you'll be s going through this yeah. deck of cards. And obviously if he gets all six completed, then he figures out the formula mm -hmm. and wins. Yes. Yes. And as he figures out one of the ingredients, you flip it over and then um, something bad happens if he draws a card that would have ordinarily found that one. So, yeah. So these all turn over to this awful digital looking version. <laughs> but. Um, yeah, so there's the beautiful Krabby Patty in all its glory. That's and, right. Yeah, there are a bunch of familiar faces from all the SpongeBob episodes. That's in the right. Show. Oh yeah, it's it's really fun to go through and look at all the characters, and you're like, oh yeah, I forgot about that guy. Yeah. So there's only I think maybe four villains in the deck. We have I one think it's out. Three. Maybe it's three. Um, we have Squilliam, Fancy Son the Third, who's obviously related to Squidward. Yes. Um, and those will have some oh, extra one. evil things. But instead of like um, yeah. Thanos Rising, where you are trying to defeat a certain number of villains, in this and plus ward off Thanos trying to get the Infinity 
stones. In this one, you have to create orders for people in the restaurant. Mm -hmm. So there are cards that come up with orders. So we have an actual Krabby Patty order that came up and there's other food items. So you'll have to be able to complete this card if uh, and you have to do enough of them yeah. to win the game. So you have those or those order cards. Uh, like at first, when we first played this game, we thought it'd be pretty simple because we're, we got like three or four order cards right off the bat, and then we didn't see any more order cards for a so long time. The I mean, yeah, so we had to. We were like, oh, this is gonna be so simple, and then it was like, whoa. Then it came down to a nail biter. Yep. And um, we, we did lost. lose. Plankton stole the crab. Yeah. Oh, yeah. SpongeBob and Gary and several of the other key and characters did not make it. Yeah. And yeah, rolled. SpongeBob died. So you roll the the dice like um, Squidward here has um, two red dice that he rolls and one green dice, and these um, represent. Friendship. The red represents friendship, and the green represents teamwork. That's odd. I feel like that's an odd combo for Squidward, but that's how it is in the game. <laughs> um, and then you go with the dice results. He got two fun and one um, friendship result. And, and before you start, you put your guy on. Either. Yeah, where yeah. you're gonna go. So I I would then get to see if I did anything. Um, I did roll enough that I could get Sandy cheeks. Nice. Yes. And then she would join my team, um, and, and get then all the benefits. Yeah. yeah, get all the benefits. Like, um, in this one, if I have an additional um, friend character, um, I can get to roll an additional friend dice. So I'd have yeah. to get another red character to be able to get the benefit from that. But yep. yeah, but it does come with uh, super already painted yes. awesome. Not miniature, uh, large bigature uh, in the game. It's pretty heavy duty, so you're good yeah. to go on that. So yeah, it's a great family weight game, especially if you enjoy the SpongeBob cartoon and or movie. Yep. So that is Plankton Rising from the Op. Let's go check the couch. Are you guys ready? Yes, we are always. We are playing Categories Master. If you've ever played the traditional Scategories game, it's got a very similar feel to it. We uh, apparently this is really big in Europe. It's like a classic over there. Called we are not just as familiar. categories. Yes, yeah. just categories. Yeah. So we've got a giant pad. She's got I don't even know a hundred sheets of it, <laughs> and they're all I think the same. But you're obviously going to be picking a different. No, wait. I should pause. Coffee. Let's talk about coffee for just a moment because mm -hmm. why not? We got both our mugs here. Yep. Vagrant Coffee is one of our new Tantrum House sponsors. Uh, they are out of, I think, Boston? No, Maryland. DC. Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah, is the beer. Somewhere <laughs> up there. Yeah. Is it going to be Washington, DC? DC and Baltimore. Ooh, <laughs> a that's a good blend? idea. You can help us name it. We're planning to name it the Tantrum House Blend, but we're actually working on a coffee blend with them that we'll have available for sale through our site and through their site in the near future. Right now we just got some nifty mugs that we're enjoying and enjoying their blend, which is pretty fantastic. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more about that, uh, stay tuned, I don't know. We'll put out some information very soon as we finalize that. I have to finish the label design and we have to finish perfecting it. We have to do a little, do a little cupping. Have you have you had Zach, the coffee aficionado, test it I out yet? I haven't yet, because I haven't actually gotten any. Oh, we need to hook up Ryan with some coffee today. We got some friends who all want to taste it. Uh, this is good stuff. What do you think, Melissa? Have you enjoyed? Um, I, I have enjoyed it. I think it's more, at least yeah. the blend that they sent us is more of a um, medium, mm -hmm. like light to medium uh, blend. I kind of like it a little stronger a little because stronger. I put so much flavored creamer in, the coffee <laughs> needs to stand down. up to the flavor. I mean, but I, I have the, enjoyed it. I think with a name like Tantrum House, it's got to be a little intense, like a little <laughs> extra caffeine kick or something. I don't know. If we're working on it. We'll give you guys more information. <laughs> Back to Categories Masters. So, for the first round of the game, we picked the letter R randomly. You've got this bar of letters at the bottom of your board. Pick a letter randomly. We're running across the top. Should we compare answers? Mm -hmm. What we do, uh, the the round ends after 90 seconds or once one person has filled out Ryan all seven. Really quickly, yeah. all the words. <laughs> so, what we do is we gain five points if we share an answer with somebody, 10 points if our answer is not shared, or 20 points if nobody else has anything in that column. Mm. Do it fast. Get that last table couple in there. Table flip coffee. Oh, <laughs> so many table good flip. names. Keep them coming. We're listening. We're right. Table flipping so coffee. For city, I had Rome. Raleigh. Reisterstown. That's 10, ten each. 
Raced your town? For a country. Is that a real thing? Yes. <laughs> I had Rwanda. I also had Rwanda. I had uh, Romania. I had some oh, country. Is that yes. a good yeah. Yeah. I've been to Romania. So, not, five, uh, five, ten. Uh, for food, I had Reuben. Rhubarb. Rutabaga? Big. Sure. <laughs> ten each. For name, I have Randy. I have Ryan Reynolds. Do I get two points for two names I don't think with you do. I think that's just categories. I have Riley. There right, you go. Ten, ten each. <laughs> for animal, I have Rhino. Ring-tailed lemur. Rooster. Boom! Sure. Mm -hmm. You can play this at home with us. For, if you... <laughs> for job, I have referee. Is a rotary an actual job? It's a job, right? I don't know what Rotary is. is Isn't it that like a club? I don't know what it is. <laughs> like the Shriners? <laughs> Ryan, Ryan was like, I'm done. And I was like, Brr. I did not put anything down on job. <laughs> I don't know if we're I, going I, I didn't make it to, to red. because. And know. then I get 20 for color. I, I did put a color. Oh, Do you have to fill them in I order? Because I, so. I, I skipped. No, don't have to fill I them put in. rust. There you go. Rust. I have rouge. Because mm. I thought red was too obvious. Right. I would have mm. wrote red if I had time to get yeah. there. Didn't make it. So. I'm going to count your rotary. I, I only got 50. Are you? Thanks. Well, 10, 20, 30, 40. I no, I think we shouldn't count your rotary. Oh, so, so I get Ryan 20. gets 25. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll so, take 50. That'll yeah, be right. 25 and whatever that is, 30 is 55, 75. Oh, you both wrote 50, one. Though. That's right. Yeah. Wait, we still... Oh, okay. 15, we died. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but there's yep. a bunch more categories, and then obviously every time you change mm -hmm. the word, you're going to get a different one. You can play with as many players mm -hmm. as you want, obviously as many pads as you've got in pencils. Mm -hmm. and there's then you, tons of categories yeah, on the, here. The categories change as you go further down the columns. Right, so you can play several rounds with just the one letter, and then new categories to mm -hmm. go after that. But um, Will, it was notary. No notary. Uh, <laughs> I mean, a rotary is still a thing. I almost it did roto rooter, like, but I was like, like, that's... That's a company. A rotary phone? Is that what it is? I don't know. Yeah. When, when you have 10 seconds, it's whatever gets yeah. on the paper. Yeah, yeah. The audience is, is saying Not no a job. For, for rotary. Shucks. I didn't count it. <laughs> what was that? Oh, I didn't even look. Master. Oh, that was double the point. double Oh, points. I should have gotten uh, double points here. Oh, that's the next round. <laughs> Whoever has the most points it. after the last round finishes is the category master. I should have 10 more oh. points if we play. But the, I don't uh, think that plays into the... Master double points. Yeah. So do we just all get double points for... It didn't food? change anything, Shucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it changes for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, because you had... What? Yeah. Uh, excellent. All right. Are we back at the table? Hello, hello. hello. We are moving into a new section of our show where we will be talking about... Kickstarter games and crowdfunding, not just because we have a, we have one that's not on Kickstarter but is being crowdfunded. Do you have the box, Larry, for this game? This is Saloon Showdown. Tell us about this game, Larry. Well, this is a multiplayer game or two-player game, but in this game, uh, you are trying to collect as much loot money that we have here as possible. Uh, the way you collect loot is by dueling or threatening your other fellow people. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Go on. <laughs> yes, yes. So on your turn, you can either draw a card to try to uh, boost up your hand. Yeah, get here. what you want in your hand. Right. Or you can threaten somebody um, to a duel. When we get home. <laughs> You don't give me your money. <laughs> I got this here. Um, but as you can see on these cards here, there's some different things. Um, when you go into a duel, uh, you have to um, determine what sound you're going to make. So it's either going to be a bang, a boom, or a blam. You also have to determine what part of the body you are going to be shooting at. And you have to determine what color gun you're using. And you have to get all three of those uh, criteria correct in order for your duel to be the winning duel. Yep. And that's determined by the three cards that are currently yep. in your hand. Yep, so there are cards that are the colors of the gun. That's what the words say. So you have to get that right. I'm showing them my hand. I may draw some different cards. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm going to give I'm gonna, my gun back. You don't yeah. have to give your gun back. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and then the cards also have some extra things on them that uh, you might be able to get some loot or there's some other icons on the cards. Uh, if you have, there's some wanted posters, so. Yeah, and uh, you can trade them in for, if you have all three of the same symbols, you can use those symbols. Um, if you don't want to go into the duel and you're a chicken. <laughs> Is there a chicken symbol? No. Why are you looking no at me? <laughs> <laughs> you show your cards and determine who has the most bullets. Whoever yeah. has the most bullets will win that. Um, and then whoever wins gets the money. So, um, I mean, on my turn, I can either draw from this open market or I can draw from the top of the deck blind mm -hmm. if you wanted to draw a card. I'm actually going to take this one. So when do we shoot people? When you threaten someone. Yeah, so you can either take more cards to make your hand better. Yes. Okay. And there's, you can only ever have three, three. in your hand, yes. so you're you going to be exchanging three. out. Okay. Or you can threaten somebody. Yes. Okay. So. So you have to threaten them and say, do you feel lucky? <laughs> do you feel a little lucky? <laughs> all right. Are you what gonna, are you going to do? What, what are you going to do, Amy? Um, all right. Walk me through how the threatening, how the threatening goes. So you have to pick whoever you want to threaten first. I'm going to threaten you. How dare you? <laughs> So you would say, "Do you feel lucky?" Do you? If feel I want lucky? to enter the duel, I would say, "Do you?" Do you feel lucky? Oh. Well, I threatened you, so of course. Well, we can either duel or just. Larry can go be to, chicken yeah. and back oh, out. So and we can it go may change bullets. my answer. Right. If so he responds. let's okay. duel. So what you're gonna have to do? Take your cards. We're gonna trade cards. All right. Nobody told me that. Come on. Don't look yet. <laughs> Wait, you can look. No okay. cheating. And then on three, you flip over these cards and you have to determine what gun you need, what word you need to say, and what part of the body you're shooting. Whoever successfully does it first wins the duel. So if we both need the same color gun, is it the first person who grabs it? It'll be the first person who grabs it. If, if you grab that first, I can also grab the bottle because the gun is not available and smack you with the bottle <laughs> instead. Okay. Are you ready? <laughs> Set. Go. Bang! Oh, shut his knee! Bang! <laughs> <laughs> Your knee's already gone. <laughs> You're shooting me in the knee? Yeah. Yes. All right, let's with, make sure you did it correctly. The Who's red bed. No, it's wrong. You're supposed to have the brown gun. What? Because you have more two brown browns. Guns. You have two browns. You did say bang, and you did hit the knee, which is correct. But you missed the wrong gun. In the chat, did he say you had to pick the one with more cards? Because I don't remember that rule. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you decide. You have to pick the one with the most brown, the most bang, the most boom. Okay. Or the most... Yep, so Larry's hand, what would you have done, Larry? I would have your to, choices. I would blam. Because there's two blams. Yes, I would blam you with any color because it's random, because all they're three are all different. They're all different. And I can shoot you in any part of the body because they're all different. Oh, so it's not one card, you do the whole thing. No. It's based on it's based majority on in your hand. Ah. Bang! So Larry did. <laughs> Larry did give you a tricky hand because his was yeah, very Yeah, right. he didn't say majority. He did say majority. <laughs> hey, easy. You took the wrong gun in the first place. Well, you have no kneecaps. And then so. after that, you trash these cards and draw three more cards. Okay, wait, so who won that? And I won, because you did the wrong one. Yep, so, so I Larry get all of your bounty. Of your all of it? So you should have two piles. One is your bounty and one is your loot. So, I would take your bounty and put it in my loot, and then I would take 10 from that and goes into my bounty, which the next person that beats me in a duel will take my bounty. And you keep on going till you get 130 loot. Yep. Um, yeah, you can also be the sheriff. Yeah, the um, sheriff actually also you get a is, wound. Has, now this is prototype, obviously, and this will be on Kickstarter Tuesday. Uh, this 
Also has like a pin on it, so you can actually wear the sheriff's badge. And there's some extra roles involved. This is something extra with the Kickstarter campaign. And I believe there also will be a mini expansion uh, involved in the Kickstarter campaign. So you have to check that out. Um, this is Saloon Showdown coming to Kickstarter on Tuesday, by the 24th. This is by Drakamaka. Drakamaka. You feeling lucky? All right, next up, are we doing? Yep, we're doing the little games. Oh, yep. sorry. Next up, with our Kickstarter stuff, I'll let Larry get this game out of the way. Uh, we have a couple games here that we're gonna show off from Calliope Games. They currently have a Kickstarter on right now. Kevin can uh, hopefully post a comment in uh, the chat. We have two of them to show off today. Uh, they have a family game night bundle that's on Kickstarter right now. We have Mass Transit and we have a, Will and I have a preview video showing this one off. And then there's also the game Allegory and Enchanted Plumes. So I have not uh, gotten a chance to play Allegory. Mass Transit is a uh, simple game here. Well, it's simple to explain, but it is not necessarily simple to win. Uh, in the game, you are trying to get some commuters home, and to do so, everyone's going to have a hand of four cards. They are required to play two of them on their turn, and cards can be used two different ways. They can be used as the actual transit lines that the um, commuter will be able to move on, or the cards can be used as the transportation symbol, but you have to be able to move um, on that line and go to the next stop. So I could have played a couple cards down or somebody could have, and then on my turn I could play this as the transportation symbol. So this commuter is going to use the rail line and come all the way out to the next station. Uh, you could also choose to walk instead and where you would just move from, you could switch lines if you wanted to, or you're just gonna move one card at a time. But if you have, um, the let's let me find some cards here the sprinting card well no if you oh. you can build this out longer <laughs> and when you use one of the modes of transportation either the bus line a ship or the rail you'll be able to go all the way to the next station so you'll be able to go a long ways uh, in one movement but there are some extra cards in the deck some of them you cannot move you must use them only as a transit line. And then you're ultimately trying to get the home destination for that. So I need another card to be able to move. There are some cards that, have, that are urgent in the deck that have this exclamation point on them and you must play all of those cards out of your hand that turn. So if you do not get all of the commuters home before uh, the deck runs out and people cannot play two cards. So you have to be able to play at least two cards from your hand. Um, you have to be able to get all the commuters home before people run out of cards or they cannot play. Hmm. So that is mass transit. It's a um, interesting little puzzle. You're not allowed to really tell everybody else what you you've have. got in your hand. You can talk about it a little bit like, oh yeah, people really like the bus these days. Uh, <laughs> but you can't really um, tell them, oh, we need to move this one specifically. Yeah, yeah so next game is Enchanted Plumes. Peacocks. Yes. So this one has gorgeous artwork to mm -hmm. it. In the deck, there should be um, one peahen. Hen? Yep, it's the, uh, here it is. And you'll have a hand of cards and you'll be building your own little tableau in front of you, building out the plumes of the um, peacock. Uh, when you do so, there are some restrictions. So whatever is in that top line, you're gonna be making cascading line of cards um, whatever colors you put in this top row are going to be the only colors you are allowed to use 
for the rest of your, so I didn't play a blue in that top row, so now I cannot play a blue feather mm -hmm. in the rest of my bird. I could, however, play a purple because I've got purple going on. I could play pink. And you're going to be making, um, let me find cards that match what I got here. You're going to be making this cask, oh, thank you, Amy. <laughs> this cascade, and then at the end, you're trying to get this last peacock here. You can play any card there. But the numbers in this top row are going to count negative, and the rest of them will count positive. Okay. If you complete your peacock, there will be some extra bonuses, um, but you're not restricted on how many cards you want to put there. If you get some high power card or high number cards, mm -hmm. you might want to make a very small peacock. If you got a lot of uh, low number of cards, but you got a lot that match. Zeros. You may want to, um, you know, continue to add to this top yeah. row so that yeah, adding more zeros. Gives you more options so you, now too. you can um, get some more points that way. So that is Enchanted Plumes, part of the Family Game Night package from Calliope. It is currently on Kickstarter right now. Kevin is going to join us and talk about Power Rangers. Power Rangers. Can you see it? Yes. This is Power Rangers. Oh, switch places with you, Kevin. Okay, I can sit here, Sarah. Sitting. It's fine. This is the last game we're talking about on today's show, and then we're going to talk about our giveaways for Backgammon. So stay tuned in just a second. Power Rangers from Renegade Game Studios is currently crowdfunded, but not on Kickstarter. This is on Crowdox, so they're deviating to a different crowdfunding platform. But you can check that out right now on crowdox.com. This is a um, villains versus heroes deck building game. And you can play uh, one versus one, two versus one, or two versus two. And basically you get to choose, do you want to be on the villain side or the hero side? And yes. <laughs> yes? Yes. You're going to play both. You're going to be the villain side, Larry? No, I want to be the pink ranger. I can be the pink ranger. You can be, yeah, I have all the colors of rangers in here. So the replayability is pretty high on a deck building game. Some of the interesting things are um, that, you know, as in addition to the regular deck building game where you're trying to, you know, build up your hand, are one is you have ways to actually start fighting the different um, mark, uh, villains or heroes in the market depending on what team you're on. So if I'm a villain, I'm trying to attack the thing, the heroes that are in the market. And if I don't, then they start attacking me. The heroes, of course, are attacking the villains. So there's, you're getting attacked from many different ways, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> And the other thing is you can um, upgrade yourself so that you start as a teenager on the, um, if you're a Power Ranger, and then you can become a Ranger nice. during the game. And the villains, you start on this like scheming side, then you become another, like a more powerful villain. Um, so there's an upgrade upgradable component on that. And uh, for the Power Rangers, of course, you're trying to um, connect, what are they, Zords? Together, who, who knows yes. the Power Rangers lore Maybe. better than the, <laughs> Leah? Uh, you don't know <laughs> Power Rangers? <laughs> yeah, SpongeBob. SpongeBob. <laughs> so, and then you're basically trying to put the, the uh, Zords all together and become an ultimate. Yeah, you know, the ultimate. It's like when do you yeah. become? When do you join? They join the become that huge. Yeah. Yes. Morphin time. Yes. Morphin time. Yeah, Morphin time. You're uh, you can do that as well and uh, really become powerful. Um, I found in the game, I played this a few times, uh, the heroes have a better starting game, but the villains, if they can sort of whittle the heroes down, the villains have a better long game. That's what we found. But um, Will and I were able to take the heroes down during our playthrough. So check that Spoilers. out. Spoilers. <laughs> See how we did it on our channel. All right, well, check out Power Rangers. Check out the other games that are on Kickstarter from Calliope and Saloon Showdown, which is coming soon to Kickstarter. And we're going back to the couch to finish our show. Thank you so much for joining us today. We have rolled the dice and gone through the comments and picked out a very special commenter, <laughs> I guess. Very special. And uh, the winner of Backgammon for today is Best at Star Trek. Best nice. at Star Trek. Congratulations. So what can they do? They can um, let us know which color they want? Yeah, let us know which color you want. There's and red or black. 
send an email to Sarah no H at tantrumhouse.com. So S A R A N O H. <laughs> sure, we should have that one too. We should definitely do that. I, will. I should just have Sarah spelled both ways as an email address. That would help some people out. But S A R A at tantrumhouse.com. And I will ship you a game of backgammon. So thank you so much for participating today. Yeah, we've had a lot of show. fun with everybody. Yeah. Uh, just for those of you who want Mandalorian talks, we all heard about the oh. crew member in the latest episode. We are looking <laughs> yes. forward to talking about that further uh, after our podcast this coming week. So stay tuned. We have been talking about the Mandalorian after our podcast episodes. So. For the past like four weeks, right? Yeah. Or three weeks? Two yeah. weeks yeah. so far, yeah. So if you're interested, uh, listen to our podcast. Yeah. yeah, at the end of the episode, after the end credits. <laughs> yeah, so if you haven't watched the episode yet, we do try and give you time to mm-hmm. not listen if you haven't, yeah. you don't want to be spoiled. And it is usually about a week or so after yeah. the yeah. episode, so there, there's yeah, time. Yeah, because technically episode three isn't going to be till Episode Monday. three will release on um, Monday. For us, for mm-hmm. the podcast talk. Yeah. We should definitely thank our sponsors. Mm-hmm. So we have Queen Games. We have the Op. Of course, we have the Backgammon sponsor as well. And, of course, uh, the the hit sponsor today. <laughs> I've so much coffee, coffee recently. Flipping good. Yeah, yeah. I love it. Table flipping good. Yeah, that's, that's our right. tagline. Right. That's that was suggested. Flipping. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, thank you guys a bunch. I had a, fun, a great time. I was over working the switcher, and just the comments were awesome today. So thank you guys for chatting with us, having great ideas, giving us lots of feedback. That makes our job super fun. We already love what we're doing, but we can interact and have a good time. Ch- I'm getting choked up. But we can have a good time chatting and laughing. I'm mostly just choking on my coffee I need to drink. Um, that, that's the blast. We love that. And we'd love for you guys to be able to do that with us at Tantrum Con. Uh, if we haven't given you any, any details on that, it's because we're still fine-tuning everything, but... Tantrum Con Digital. Yeah, digitalcon.com will give you the information that we currently have on our live event that we're going to be doing in February, live online. So no in-person event for TantrumCon this year, but we hope that you'll tune in. We want to do some really cool stuff. We're going to be kind of curating a Zoom community throughout the day, so we'd love to have you join us for that. We're going to have some sign-ups coming up really soon where you guys can learn how you can be involved. We've already got a bunch of awesome sponsors who are very excited to be joining us. And we're going to be doing some really cool and hopefully some really unique stuff. We'd love for you guys to be a part of it. So it's February 5th through the 7th. Yeah, tune in for that Check live. Yep. I think that's pretty much it. I'm going to head back to the switcher. Okay. Larry's got it. He, I think. Okay.